What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In our last video, we went through this challenge where we built out this user interface with like some user cells that we would see in something similar to like a social media application, right? So in this video, we are going to be covering something called padding. And we saw an example of that in the last video. And just to do a quick recap, guys, if I were to comment this padding guy out, or sorry, I deleted it. Um, let me just comment it out. You guys would notice that this hugs the edges of the phone screen, right? But then if I apply this padding, it literally just gives it some padding on the edges. And this uh, padding guy is extremely useful in SwiftUI and it's extremely common to create spacing between elements and around frames and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. So let's go ahead and go up to our SwiftUI bootcamp project folder and make a new group and we're gonna call this padding. And we are going to drag that down below stacks and create a new file called our padding module. So uh, padding seems simple guys, um, but there are some intricacies of it that are important to understand. And I also wanna go over the differences between when to use padding and simply when to use spacing in your stacks. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video here. So let's go ahead and start this off by creating a V stack guys. And then we can just say text and we'll say like, hello world, how are you doing today? Okay, so I want us to just go ahead and apply some padding to this the same way we did in our last video but I want us to pay attention to the frame of this text. So we can see here that the box surrounding our text or the frame surrounding our text is very tight to it, right? On all edges, the, the horizontal and the vertical edges. So if I were to go ahead and apply some padding to this, and guys, just do it with the blank constructor. You guys will notice that when you type out padding and hit enter, it asks you for some edge insets. We're gonna be covering that in a little bit. So you guys will now notice that my text looks the same, but now I have this padding around the frame, right? So really quickly, if I comment that out, you notice that the frame is hugging the text very tightly. And then if I apply padding to it, it expands my frame. So the padding has a default value of, I think like 16 pixels, guys. You can pass in any number you want here. So for example, I could say padding of four and it will give me a padding of four pixels on all the edges, around all the edges of this frame, both leading top and bottom and trailing edges. And I could say eight and it'll get a little bigger. I could say like 64 and it will get like massive. You know, it got so big there that it actually made the text go on to a new line. So let's actually just delete this really quickly here, guys. And I want to show you some detailed examples of how padding works and the importance of why we're getting so involved with this. So on this text property, I want you to go ahead and give this a background of dot blue. So I believe this is the first time we're using this background guy. So this is different from the foreground color. If I were to say dot foreground color here, it would make my text blue. But if I apply a background, it applies this background color to the current frame of this view component. And this gives us a really clear representation of the size of the frame of this text component right now. So what I want us to do after that, and make sure you do this after the background, is apply some padding. So you guys are gonna notice that this blue background stays the same, but then the frame of the text component has now expanded. So this is where things get really interesting with SwiftUI. We notice here that the order in which we apply the modifiers here actually matters now. And this might seem confusing at first, but the more you play around with this stuff, guys, the more you get the hang of it. And we're gonna get some practice with it here. So to show you what I mean by that, I want you to take this padding and put it before the background of blue. And you guys will notice that it applies padding and it expands the frame, and then we give it a background color of blue. But if I do things the other way around, I apply a background of blue to the current frame of the text, and then I apply some padding. So now I could actually go ahead and give this a different background color, let's say like dot pink, and it will apply the pad or the, the background to the current size of the frame once we've applied this padding. So this can keep going guys. You could say like dot padding, dot background, dot green, right? And this just gives you a really clear example of how the order of modifiers that we, when we apply them can work. 
And this is very important to understand when you're building out your user interfaces. Like the main concept here being that when we apply this background, it applies it to the current frame of that view component at that particular time. And then we applied padding and then we applied back, uh, the background color of pink. And once again, this pink background gets applied to the size of the frame at that current time on line 17, which was this size right here. And then we applied more padding and then a background color of green. And then that was the size of the frame right there. So that's just a really interesting example. I'll just, uh, you know, uh, dial some of that back a little bit. Now I want us to go over how we can apply padding to different edges of a view component. So let's go ahead and make a text called horizontal padding. And we need that to be inside of the VStack. So really quickly, guys, let's go ahead and uh, wrap all of this inside one big VStack. Just like that, yep. Or what we could do is take this text and simply apply it to, or those modifiers and apply it to the text. And then we could pass this guy into that V stack. And then I think that will only make us need one V stack. Sorry, that was a little confusing, but at the end of all that, your code should look like this, right? We're inside of one V stack here and we're just applying the modifiers to the text component instead of the stack itself. Uh, we'll do some modification to this VStack itself in a little bit. <clears throat> so let's go ahead here, guys, and say dot padding. And then we're going to say dot horizontal. And you guys will notice that it only applies padding on the horizontal edges of this text component. And then I'll go ahead and say dot background. And I can say maybe dot purple. Right? So that is what the padding looks like on the horizontal edges right there. So if I were to remove that padding, the, the, the background only gets applied to the current size of the frame, but once I apply the horizontal padding, it expands on those horizontal edges. And if you guys want to apply a custom number of the horizontal padding, you can say like 32 at the end of it, and it will apply 32 pixels of padding on the horizontal edges, right? Horizontal meaning both left and right, guys. So then let's do another text component here and call it vertical padding. So we can do the same thing we did here. Let's just copy and paste that. But let's maybe make it blue. And instead of horizontal, we're gonna say vertical. And you guys will notice that there is no horizontal padding on the horizontal or on the leading and trailing edge now. It's all on the vertical edges, right? So this gives us further customization with our padding. Um, dot vertical will apply it to the top and the bottom. So let me just make some comments, left plus right, top plus bottom. And padding here is all edges. Okay, so now we guys, we can take this or drill down even a step further. So let's say text leading padding. And let's go ahead and paste that. And we can say dot leading. And you guys will notice it only applies padding to the leading edge. And here I could say maybe pink. Cool. And this will just be left edge or leading edge. And we can do the same thing for trailing. Say trailing. And let's make this maybe yellow. And this is right edge or trailing edge. Right. So I think you guys get the idea. We can do this on the top and bottom edges as well. So I'm going to say top, bottom, top, bottom. And I don't think we need these comments anymore. I think we get the idea. Right. So um, let's see. Let's maybe make one of these purple and one of these like cayenne or something. Okay, guys, so on top, this guy right here, it applies padding to the top of the text component and similar to bottom, it applies it on that bottom edge right there. So that's some, some really cool examples of how padding works and all of the intricacies of it, guys. And to finish this video, guys, I want us to head back to our stacks module and talk a little bit about how we use this padding modifier here. 
So the big thing to understand here is that we chose to put the padding on the VStack itself and not on each individual component within the VStack. And I wanna show you guys what that would look like if we did it that way. So let's go ahead and comment out the padding that we have on the VStack. And we'll see here that it causes the, our cells to hug the edges of the screen, right? And if you guys were to select this H stack and go ahead and add padding to that and add padding to the other one, it gives us a very different look, right? Like there's a lot more spacing um, on these edges here. So if you guys look at the frame of each one of these individual elements, we notice that it expands quite a bit. Right, and that gives us a lot of spacing in between each one of our items. So the difference between doing that, and once again, let me just comment this out and comment this out, is that when we apply padding on the V stack itself, it doesn't give me any of that extra spacing. And that's because of the frame of this V stack, right? So if I comment it back in or back out, and we look at this V stack itself, this V stack, is this is the box for this VStack or the frame for this VStack. So when I apply padding to the VStack itself, it's just gonna give me padding on the, the, the overall VStack, not each element within that VStack, right? So that's kind of what we want there. And if we wanted more spacing between each individual item, then we could simply add our spacing parameter on our VStack here, right? That's a much cleaner implementation in my opinion, because when you guys are randomly adding padding to each one of the view components inside here, it's not very, it's not super clean code, right? Because then every time you add a new element, you have to manually add padding to it. Whereas now if I were to add a new element, like copy and paste this guy, all of the spacing and stuff is already handled for me, right? So, and that's because I spaced out each element with my V stack like this, and then just apply padding to the edge of the V, the end of the V stack or the V stack itself, as opposed to applying padding to each individual element. Cause then I'd have to go like this and do all that stuff every single time I added something new to it. Right? So that just gives you guys an idea of how we can write cleaner code with Swift UI and essentially how to write code that is easier to scale. Right? So for example, what I mean by that is when I add this new element, I don't want to have to remember to apply padding to each individual element that I add to a stack. I want to just set my stack up so that it's already handled for me. And then I can just apply padding to my, the stack itself to get this desired look, right? So that's a much cleaner implementation, guys. And I want to reiterate to you that, you know, you don't have to get this stuff like and be an expert on it right away it's important to understand that this is gonna take a lot of practice and a lot of time to get good at. There's definitely a learning curve with Swift UIs. There, there's a lot of ins and outs and a lot of intricacies to how to build user interfaces. And there's not one right way of doing it. There's a lot of different ways of building UIs with Swift UI. And this is my style. And you guys might develop your own style as you go. Um, so it's important to understand that this is gonna take time and patience, guys. Uh, to get good at, and we are gonna get that throughout this module, the more we build user interfaces. So the more these modules progress, the more complex the user interfaces are gonna get, and the more we're gonna use these foundational concepts that we're learning right now. So you guys are gonna get tons of practice with this stuff as we go. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. In the next one, we are gonna be talking about something called spacers. So get excited for that, guys. We will see you there. Peace.